Hey, haven't we seen this intro screen before? Oh, yeah. How goes it, ladies and gentlemen? Thanks for checking out Shinsen88 Gaming. So, I recently covered the first half of this game. First half referring to the first playable character. So we're going to be checking out the second playable character in The Roadrunner. For those of you that missed the original one, this is a Sega Genesis game that came out in 1995 based on the Looney Tunes franchise, and more specifically, based on the Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons. This is Desert Demolition. As mentioned, we will this time be checking out the Roadrunner. So if you missed the first one, what is this game? It is a fairly typical and relatively feature light platformer. Your goal is basically to go from left to right and there are a number of obstacles in your way obviously preventing you from doing that. This game is completely and totally carried by its aesthetic and theme, but I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. The game does such a great job of capturing the look and feel of those old um, Roadrunner cartoons that I think just on that alone it's worth checking out. So the first time, as I mentioned, we played as Wile E. Coyote. This time we're playing as the Roadrunner. You do find yourself going through the same levels. However, they play out slightly differently, depending on which character you're playing. Obviously, as the Roadrunner, you are not trying to catch Wile E. Coyote, but you are, in fact, trying to run away from Wile E. Coyote. Now, if you do get caught, you sort of dash off the screen for a split second and then come back, so it's not like an automatic loss or anything like that. And so playing as the Roadrunner tends to be a little bit easier, uh, not only in that sense, but also in the sense that not everything in the environment is killing you <laughs> at all times. So one of the things that I brought up when I was playing as Wile E. Coyote was that falling from heights, bumping your head, getting blown up, all these are things that deal damage. So the Roadrunner takes damage from getting blown up, but you don't take damage from bumping your head. You will instantly stop if you come up to an obstacle and you don't take fall damage. So the main hazard is like that. Wile E. Coyote catching you. Roadrunner controls pretty similarly to Wile E. Coyote. You have C for jump. You have B for dash. You will automatically run, so you don't have to hold the B button like you did with Wile E. And then you have the action button, which is your trademark to beep beep. Or as I referred to it uh, as a kid, meep meep button. It doesn't really do much, although technically if you sneak up behind uh, Wily, you can get him to jump and maybe hit his head. But it's more there just as a taunt. <laughs> Kaboom. You'll notice that as you dash through things as the Roadrunner, you do not take damage, so that's pretty cool. And you can do these Sonic the Hedgehog style loops as the Roadrunner as well. I did mention this in the first one, but just in case you missed that one, every level has a bonus stage that you can access by collecting enough stamps. And I believe we figured out that it is 125 stamps regardless of the level. The bonus stages are really just there for extra lives and score. However, they are worth doing just so that you can see some other iconic Looney Tunes characters in Cameo. And I still think that that water effect is, is pretty cool. We mentioned, of course, last time that this was developed by Blue Sky, who also made the Jurassic Park games on the Genesis that use the same water effect. But I won't get all into that again. So because we already talked about the development, the developer, and the reception of this game when it came out, I figured that we could talk a little bit about Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner just in general. So I mentioned that this was one of my favorite cartoons or series of cartoons when I was a kid and of course continues to be till this day. So I went back and did just a little bit of research as I often do on the Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons and I won't say I was like surprised but I still was, I well I still found it a little bit interesting how old these cartoons were because I think that uh, Personally, anyway, I think these are so timeless that you don't actually realize how old they are. Like, the humor is still funny, 
no matter when you watch it, no matter how you know long it's been since you first saw it. But the original Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoon actually came out in 1949, which is pretty crazy. Like, think about all the things that have happened from 1949 to present, and these characters are still just as iconic as uh, they were back then, at least in my opinion. Ah, almost got me, but not quite. Now, certainly the uh, vertical levels are going to be a little bit easier as the Roadrunner, because you don't have to worry about fall damage or smacking your head when you go up. And I do think the Sonic the Hedgehog style loops are pretty funny. And hey, I'll take all that extra time. Why not? So anyways, going back to the actual cartoons themselves. Apparently there have been about 50 shorts. And those being the typical Looney Tunes style, you know, seven-ish minute long shorts. The first one, as I mentioned, was 1949. And apparently they kept making them all the way through 2020, although I, I certainly haven't seen uh, the more recent ones. Although, this is a very polarizing topic. The Looney Tunes show, I actually thought was pretty good. And I know that sounds a little bit heretical to say, but the episodes that I saw, I was like, how is this show actually good? Because normally I'm a sort of a purist on those kind of things. I remember, though, as a kid watching not just the cartoons, but there were the uh, the movies, or at least one movie, that was basically just edited from various shorts into one, that being the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie. That was a frequent uh, rental for me when I was younger. Oh boy, here we go. So what's kind of funny about this, again, is that there's actually no reason for us to really even be getting these stamps other than just for points. But screw it, we're going to get all of them, because we can. <laughs> now, one uh, thing that I always found really funny about the Roadrunner cartoons, of course, was the uh, inclusion of the scientific names on the beginning. And they would be different and like equally silly every time. Unfortunately, the ones at the start of this game that you might have mentioned on the title screen, or might have noticed rather, not mentioned, um, they don't change. But that would have been really funny if every time you opened the title screen, they looked slightly different. But alas. Oh, come on, we got two more. We can do this. There we go. Well, that was fun, I guess. Dang, we're racking up the score already. And of course, the score means absolutely nothing, but hey. <laughs> so, although the coyote is after you for most of the levels, and that's the main hazard, as I mentioned, He's not really that much of a hazard for the most part. And so what you will find is that as the Roadrunner, the running out of time aspect is a little bit more of an issue. Especially if you are going for the bonus stages. Because you do have to do not so much backtracking, but just take a little bit of extra time. As a kid, because I was mostly focused on running from point A to point B, there were definitely certain levels where I generally didn't get the uh, bonuses. But of course, for the purposes of this playthrough, I wanted to get all of them, right? Why bother showing the game if we're going to, you know, leave out a ton of features? Not that this game even has a ton of features at all, but a significant percentage of the features. How about that? I think you can see here that I mentioned in the previous one the controls are relatively responsive. I feel like I would not be able to easily bounce along those balloons like that if the controls were as bad as some reviews of the time made them seem. And we're actually going to get to 125 or pretty close to it just in this first section of the level. 
We do, of course, know that there is another section coming up. Oh, hold on. I want that. There we go. Okay, well, I think we're going to have plenty of time. There we go. I got to say, I do also find it pretty charming that uh, bird seed is the health restore item for the Roadrunner. Now, I would say that they did their research, but I feel like they probably didn't need to do too much research because, you know, most people know these. Or at least I would assume that most people know these cartoons. But still, the attention to detail is certainly nice. They could have gone and put a lot of stuff that, you know, didn't have anything to do with the original cartoons in the game. And instead, they decided to keep it thematically appropriate. All right. So as the Roadrunner, we're going to have a little bit of an easier time running away from this train. You'll notice with the Roadrunner, the boost actually does not run out once you use it. So you can just keep running forward forever if you want. And I'm sure we'll miss a few power-ups as we, yep, <laughs> as we go. Okay, yep, that's fine. At least we got Yosemite Sam, though. And there's what I was mentioning about the train last time. Your sprite becomes invisible, but doesn't actually disappear. Which is kind of funny. I gotta say, I do find it funny that you'll just be running through the level normally, and you'll just hear Wile E. Coyote like, blowing himself up and smacking his head and stuff. Again, seems pretty appropriate. Although actually I'm in a little bit of danger here because you'll notice that I did not get my health back at the beginning of the level. But that's okay. So I was trying to think about like what were my favorite gags from the various Roadrunner cartoons. And it's honestly kind of hard to think of some specific ones. I liked them all, but obviously the classics are like the uh, painting the, you know, painting the tunnel and then having the Roadrunner run through it. That was always a classic. I remember when, uh, okay, dude, calm down. I remember when uh, Wile E. Coyote hears the beep beep coming and is ready to catch the Roadrunner, and then it turns out that it was actually a truck, so he gets run over. Obviously, all of the uh, the shots showing the, you know, looking down at the canyon and him just falling through. Classic. Uh, just so many great... Hello. Okay. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, boy. Yeah, you thought that was going to be the next 10 minutes, didn't you? So, yeah, obviously those ones were great. I did also always love the uh, Bugs Bunny ones where Wile E. Coyote actually spoke. You know, super genius. Those were pretty good as well, but didn't necessarily involve the Roadrunner. But uh, it was funny to see them take the character in kind of a different direction. Although I think the, uh, the canon one, if you want to call it that. Does anybody care about the Looney Tunes canon? Probably. Um... The canon one is the non-speaking one, I believe. I don't know. I could be wrong. Although I love Looney Tunes a lot, um, I'm not an expert and certainly haven't kept up with them, you know, over the years. So maybe someone can inform me. Okay, that's fine. One thing I did always find odd about this game is that uh, I mentioned this on a lot of like older games where they didn't actually code like your lives going higher than nine. So once you're at nine, it's like, well, you gathered a life and it did nothing for you. It's just kind of weird. 
especially when you're given plentiful lives to make it, you know, if you were really trying, you could probably get in the 15 to 20 range, and yet you're not able to go above 9. So, kind of weird, but I don't think the game is difficult enough that that really becomes an issue. It's not like you're going to have to stack all your lives up for a super difficult final boss or anything. I did already spoil the final boss of this one in the previous video. That spoiling, of course, just taking the form of telling you that it's the same final boss regardless of which character you're playing. But hey. I don't know. Just a, a weird thing, in my opinion. You'll also notice that, unfortunately, the game did not have enough bonus stages to add a unique bonus stage to every single level, which is kind of lame. Wily e. Coyote actually got the more interesting bonus stages in the form of the Rocket one, the uh, Jackhammer one, and pretty much those, actually. But it would have been nice if we had been given, you know, some other cool Roadrunner-specific one, but alas. As I mentioned last time, I guess there's not too much point in... Uh, complaining about a game that's this old, right? It's not like the developer's gonna go back and patch it, so... Oh well. But hey, we managed to finish that one a lot faster than we did the previous one. So let's just run in circles for a while. Fun times. Alright. Now, you know what's funny uh, is as I was researching this and I was thinking about like what were the funniest Wily e. Coyote gags, the Wikipedia page for the Wily e. Coyote and Roadrunner shorts actually includes a chart that lists which gadgets were used in which episodes, which is kind of funny, but I guess actually kind of useful. Um, I did find that just amusing that someone had taken the time to do that, but it is the internet, so I'm not really surprised, I guess. And okay, this is actually getting a little bit dangerous here. But we got to take our time a little bit so that we get enough stamps by the end of it to hit the bonus stage, of course. Again, I'm not, not criticizing a game this old, but I'm still a little bit salty that we didn't get a unique final level, right? We just got a reskin. That's a little bit lame. But what are you going to do? I actually got to get like 50 more stamps, so let's be a little bit, uh, a little bit gradual in our approach here. I'm actually curious, I've never looked up a speedrun for this game, but I imagine that if you are not going for the bonus stages, you can make it through this very quickly. In fact, in fact, we have a little bit of time left. Let's find out. Let's find out. We'll just go for Speed Demos Archive, perhaps. Does anybody... Well, no, we'll go speedrun.com. How about that? Does anybody actually run this game? 3 and 3, posted 5 months ago. 4 minutes, 23 seconds. That's just for the Roadrunner. And then... Stands with a Z. 5 minutes and 8 seconds, posted 3 months ago for Wile E. Coyote. And perhaps the most shocking thing about this is that people are still, like, getting the record down as recently as, like, just a couple months ago. <laughs> that's perhaps the most surprising thing of all. But hey, that's kind of cool. People keeping the game alive a little bit. Although I, I would say it's probably one of those cases where uh, it's just that nobody cares about this game, so nobody's running it. But, you know, it's still kind of cool. Will I be practicing my uh, speedrun for this game? Nope. But you're more than welcome to. In fact, uh, 
for speedrun.com, we only actually have five entries for the Roadrunner and nine for the Coyote. In fact, the Roadrunner ones started about three years ago, and the Coyote ones also started about three years ago. And what's funny is that it's completely different people that are holding the records here. So, there's that. Hop to it. I want to see your uh, Desert Demolition speedrun linked on my channel as soon as possible. Well, anyways... By the way, in between uh, this one and the last one, I did a little bit more research on the beep beep sound. And uh, what's interesting is that there was one of the uh, the original people that worked on these cartoons by the name of Paul Julian. Um, he was one of the sound effects guys. It was supposed to be his imitation of a car horn. And apparently, according to one thing that I found, the preferred spelling by Paul Julian was always meep meep or mweep mweep, so with an M as in Mary. So perhaps I was not that far off. However, I've always seen it spelled out as beep beep. But maybe we were just a little bit on the same page there, Paul Julian and I. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, here's our boss fight. It's the same boss fight. However, this one just thematically makes a lot more sense in my opinion. You could see that Wily e. Coyote would be driving a truck and trying to blow up the Roadrunner, but it doesn't quite make sense in the reverse, right? It does, of course, play out exactly the same way, regardless of who you choose. And we have once again easily made it over 100,000 points. Huzzah. I have no idea what a quote-unquote good score in this game looks like. And this is a little uh, a little dark here at the end. <laughs> I guess the shock was too much for him. Anyways, everybody, that was Desert Demolition, played from the Roadrunner's point of view. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you are curious what playing as Wile E. Coyote looks like, I do have a video of that on the channel as well. And in that one, I go a little bit more into the development and reception of the game when it came out. As I normally do, I will be posting a long play version, so all the way through with no commentary, and then I'll have both characters back to back. So if that's more of your thing, feel free to check that out. And uh, that's really about all I had to say. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. And uh, until then, be safe. God bless.